Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Lisa. Today we're going to be making a shepherd's pie. There's so many different variations for shepherd's pie. This is simple. It's easy. It's just you use whatever meat you want. You don't even have to, you don't even have to use chopped meat. You can use lentils if you want to make it vegetarian and use um, vegetable broth. But in my recipe, I'm just using chopped meat, um, a little wine, a little beef broth, and the vegetables are just celery, carrots, and onions. Okay, and it's really, really yummy. And you could do your mashed potatoes. You could make your homemade mashed potatoes. You could go buy simply mashed mashed potatoes. You could just instant potatoes, whatever you want to do, you do. Um, I cooked one on the stove top. You could do yours on the Instant Pot, and I'll get into those. But it's really yummy. It's a good shepherd's pie. Okay, so stay tuned. Quick about the meat. If you wanted to, you could use ground turkey, too. Ground chicken, ground with turkey, um, lamb. It's up to you. Okay. You guys, go look. Yum, guys, yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy. We see how nicely it stays together. Hey, everybody, so let's just get started. I'm going to go over the ingredients first and then talk to you in a little bit more of depth. This is a, like I said, a shepherd's pie. There's so many different variations just from the meat, from the stuff you put in there, technique, just everything. This is just a really um, basic recipe and it's very tasty. It's very simple. It looks like a lot of ingredients, but it's simple. So we're gonna need salt, and I'll tell you as we go along how much. We're gonna need a half a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna need one fourth teaspoon of paprika. I'm gonna put, which I don't have out. I'm gonna put onion powder and garlic powder. Just shake it in there to taste, okay? Pepper. And salt really is up to you, but usually rule of thumb is about a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat. Okay. Oh, hang on. That's my monitor. Hang on. Sorry about that, guys. I have low sugar. No, I'm not a diabetic. Um, I've just been running low. So anyway, uh, back to business. I brought out my garlic powder. Again, that's just going to be sprinkling. We spoke about the paprika, the salt and pepper to taste. The rule of thumb for salt is about one teaspoon per pound of meat. Here we have two tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna be using a good drinking wine. This is a Merlot. You could use Pinot Noir. I don't, I don't never pronounce that one right. Pinot Noir, that one, you could use that. But anyway, here's two cloves of garlic. I made a really delicious, easy, shortcut chicken pot pie tonight and it was rotisserie chicken cubed uh, turkey from the deli, cut in a big thick slab. But anyway, that's neither here nor there, and it was delicious um, and easy. But anyway, so I made potato. I was peeling potatoes, so I made enough to do. Let's get the camera on. This is four cups of potatoes. Again, I'll do, go into more detail. You could do, do them on a stove top, or you could use them, cook them in a pressure cooker, like your Instant Pot or something. Um, just a cup on these cute plates, Christmas tree shop. But anyway, um, flat leaf Italian parsley. I'm going to use a little rosemary. I'm going to use a little thyme. This carrot broke. This okay. I'm going to probably just use two carrots, even though this was a big one. But like two medium carrots. These are huge. Um, two stalks of celery. Okay, and this is another cute plate. Um, so that broke. Two onions, again, these are like medium to large onions. You could use less, you could use two onions or even a little bit less, but at least one, okay? This is a, a pound of chopped meat. This is about a pound and a quarter, because I never just do a pound. I always go a little bit bigger. Um, we're gonna be using, once I assembly, once I assemble, excuse me, the Shepherd's pie. We're going to do the layer of meat, then your potato layer. Then I'm going to sprinkle about a third of a cup of cheddar cheese on top of that. Oh, we're going to be using two tablespoons of tomato paste. This comes in a tube, guys. You could just get the tube and squeeze it out. I will freeze the rest. I'll take out two tablespoons and put the rest in the freezer. Um, you can also use ketchup in a bind. You don't have to use rum wine if you don't want to. You could just use more chicken broth, a uh, uh, beef broth. So instead of throwing a cup of wine, wine, you would use 
a third of a cup of broth. I'm using both because I need one cup. So anyway, then you need one cup of beef broth. So if you were just using straight up uh, stock, you would be using one and one third cup beef stock, beef broth. Okay, but I'm just using a cup because I'm using wine. Um, we're going to be using a cup of frozen peas. I like sweet peas, and this is what we're going to be using. A cup of frozen um, peas. If you guys want, until today, I never, ever, 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 ever used frozen diced onions. But I was in such a rush. Even though it's so simple to cut this. It's so simple. Um, but anyway, I use that. But you could use frozen. Take any shortcuts you want. The parsley is going to be a tablespoon of the parsley. The thyme is about a half a teaspoon to maybe three quarters of a teaspoon of thyme. The rosemary is about to be a teaspoon. And this is all minced. Um, and I'm going to be actually putting this in my food processor tonight. I have a little mini one. And this is just going to be diced. Not minced. It's smaller than chopped. It's going to be a, a nice, fine, fine dice. Okay. Um, what else? trying to think what else there is to tell you guys um hmm. oh if you're gonna if you don't have fresh thyme that's fine use dried but remember dry is, is stronger so maybe use about an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon of dry thyme okay and that is it for the ingredients oh and then we're gonna put this this is a like nine and a half by 11 and a half or something like that that's plenty big um okay that's it i just want to say um again for the potatoes okay well first of all let me say what you can make this completely a vegetarian dish how use a vegetable broth and use lentils instead of chopped meat you could you guys i'm just forget the uh, vegetarians for a minute you could use lamb in this dish as well instead of chopped meat you could definitely use lamb but uh, to go back to the vegetarian, guys, you know what? Use the vegetable broth and you could use lentils instead. Um, now, I, I don't know a lot about uh, vegetarian food, but I think you also have like tofus that it picks up whatever flavor or texture you're looking for. Like if you wanted it to taste like a burger, you could make it taste like a burger. But anyway, anyway, just use the lentils if you want. Um, and this is gluten free. Okay. And you could, how can you make this even more gluten-free? Use, um, instead of flour over there, use cornstarch. Okay, instead of potatoes, you guys can use cauliflower. And actually, if you're watching what you're eating with the um, potatoes, what you could do is, you could do half potatoes, half cauliflower. I love that mixture. Oh my God, so good with, with cloves of garlic. Oh my God, yummy. Um, and then you could also do straight up cauliflower. I do that too to make it taste like a uh, mashed potato. I use a little Parmesan cheese in there. Uh, again, I put garlic in there. What else do I put in there? Um, oh, chicken stock. So anyway, but anyway, what you could do is, if you're gonna use this in your Instant Pot or any pressure cooker, doesn't have to be Instant Pot. pot. I don't have Instant Pot. I have the Crock Pot pressure cooker. Because I like the Crock Pot. I like the slow cooking method better for the Crock Pot brand than I do the Instant Pot. Anyway, you could, Put um, probably about two pounds, maybe two and a half pounds, probably two pounds of peeled potatoes in your Instapot. You first put down every Instapot or um, uh, pressure cooker comes with a, like a little metal trinket. All right. You put that down on the bottom of your um, Instapot or your pressure cooker. Then you put in one cup of water. Then you put your potatoes on top of the metal rack. The water will not come above the trinket. It will stay below it. And then you pressure cook that on high for five minutes. You let it naturally, you know, st st let it release the steam on its own. It takes about, what, two minutes? Then you test them. They should definitely be cooked at that, st at that point. If you need to, you could pressure cook them on high for another minute. Okay. And if you don't like peas, don't use peas. Put stream beans in. Kind of adjust this to your family's taste. Okay? Um, if you like lima beans, use lima beans. It's up to you. Entirely up to you. Let's say use two brown, uh, two cups of cooked brown lentils in place of that chopped meat. In case you were wondering how much lentils. 
about two cups. One more thing before I go, I just want you to know this freezes really well. And you can make this in advance. You could prep all this, get it going up to the part where you bake it. And you could keep it in your refrigerator up to three days. And you could also, and then you would take it out of the refrigerator, let it get to room temperature for about 30 minutes. Then you stick it in your oven at 350 for about 15 to 30, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. You can also microwave it in the microwave, uh, heat it up in the microwave. Um, and you, we've actually froze this too. You do everything like I just said up to cooking it. So you prepare it and you prep it up to the point of sticking it in the oven and cooking it. But you put it in, instead of putting it in the oven and cooking it, stick it in your freezer and you can freeze it for up to two, min, um, two months. Back to those mashed potatoes that we're never going to uh, get stuck. We're going to be stuck talking about forever it seems. Um, regardless of what, if you do them on the stove top or the uh, pressure cooker, you got to drain them. I always warm up my milk if you do not worry cream. Okay, if you don't, you run there really a good risk of making your potatoes gummy, if you will, um, or that gluey, gloppy mess. So I always heat mine up. So again, I think I put in about six, about a six tablespoons to a stick of butter. I did about a half a cup of milk and salt and pepper to taste. And I always salt my water um, for sure. So I always do the method in my, uh, on the top of the stove top. So I like to salt my water because I like how the salt gets through the potato, not just on top of it, but actually through the potato. Um, and again, I hate to sound like a broken record because all my old viewers, uh, subscribers know that I keep harping on the fact that when you make macaroni or pasta, you call it, uh, or your grits or mashed potatoes, you've got to always salt the water because if you don't, you can't get that salt in afterwards. You really cannot. You get the surface salt. And it's not the same thing as getting it penetrated. So anyway, that's neither here or there. Um, and that's it. So I just wanted to go over the potatoes. Okay. And I used, for this, I use Yukon Gold. You could use Russet or you could use Yukon Gold here. Uh, russet are more fluffier. Okay, in a drier potato. And they're fluffier. Just make sure you drain your potato as well. But... It, um, and the Yukon Gold, for me, is a little creamier. Um, but I think that's the difference for me, is one is a little bit more creamier and one is more fluffier. Both are delicious. Both are nice. Can't go wrong with either or. Hey, everybody, guess what? I forgot to mention one of another ingredient, extra virgin olive oil. You can use whatever oil you like, coconut oil, grapeseed oil, extra virgin olive oil. I'm using garlic tonight, so I'm going to be using this oil. It's a um, olive oil that has a really awesome, awesome garlic flavor. So I'm going to just use a little bit of this. Guys, I just turned my um, heat on. This is going to be medium high. There's about two tablespoons of that garlic uh, oil, extra virgin, uh, extra virgin olive oil with the garlic. Anyway, yeah, go ahead, put that on. This is butter. Guys, this is a little bit of teamwork tonight. Ken is helping me mince things is a little bit later. Um, I'm actually cooking this for tomorrow. My parents came over for dinner tonight. We had the chicken pot pies, I said. And um, tomorrow, well, I'll explain tomorrow, tomorrow. But I'm just, I like when this sits for an extra day anyway. But here is the carrot. Just a little bit more than I, I don't think I'm going to use that all because those are big carrots. And carrots are sweet, right? Well, oh, that ate that right up, didn't it? I'm gonna have to add more. But the garlic smells amazing. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick this in a Ziploc baggie and put that in the freezer for another use. I think this is plenty of carrots. And I'm starting with the carrots. Well, let me tell you what you could do. You could brown your meat, then throw your vegetables right in with the meat and do that. But for me personally, these, the vegetables, even though it cooks in the oven, still remain a little hard, you know, and really al dente, and I don't like that. I like my vegetables a lot softer, so I'm going to cook the vegetables down, give them a really good jump start, then I will add the meat to the vegetables. That's, so that's what I want to do. So I'm going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper. That is it. Okay. 
but let's do the salt and pepper now. Just a little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. Let's see. Because I'm going to season every layer. Next, I'm going to throw in here is my celery. So I think that takes a while, too, to break that down a little bit. And this is it. So I'm going to let this cook for about another two minutes or so, and then we'll add the um, celery. If you did this cook of the meat first, you would have enough fat from your um, chopped meat. And I'm using 85%. You could use 90, 93, you could use 80. When I make burgers, I do 80. So I like the fat ratio, 80 to 20. Here's the onion. I'm just holding up a little bit of the onion. Okay. We're going to just put pepper in this time, no salt. So I threw a little extra salt in with the celery. So we're going to make up for it. I'm going to add a pinch more uh, garlic olive oil. I like using that olive oil when I make like spaghetti aioli. That's with garlic and olive oil. It's delicious. You know what this combination is right here? I have a recipe for a rice dish um, where I put celery, onion, um, carrots, and bacon with rice. I use white rice. And I like to serve that with Easter. Um, or just a special meal. And if I wanted them even softer, guys, I could put a lid on this and help steam it down a little bit. But this is good enough. Okay, I'm gonna do this for another minute and then I'm gonna uh, get the chopped meat ready. All right, Kenna has the chopped meat, that's good. I'm just gonna put a little salt. I don't know if you can see it, but you can't see, guys. I'm doing about a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, there you go. Some black pepper, not too much. A little garlic powder, not too much. A little onion, lower that, can the meat. No, the, not, the, not that, just your hand. That's just a little onion powder dried. Now, Ken's gonna mix that you in. Stir that? No, but Ken's, just, Ken's gonna take this mixture and mix it by hand. Quick, I'm gonna move this, and we're gonna put, guess what? I gotta move this. We're gonna put garlic in. Those two cloves of garlic, I do with more oil. And the browner you get your vegetables and your meat, guys, all that is is flavor other than garlic. You do not want to burn your garlic because that is bitter. Okay. So we're just going to cook this down for a couple of minutes. I shouldn't even say a couple of minutes, maybe about, um, I don't want to keep this from burning too. 60 seconds. Okay, let's do that for 60 seconds. I'll be back. I'm going to mix that all together. Okay, can you please bring in the meat now? I love the smell of hot garlic. Yum. Now I'm going to throw the meat in. Now, Ken won't stick his hands in here. If this was Thanksgiving, I actually do. I take it off the burner, hot or not, I stick my hands in there. To mix this all together 
Um, so I like to mix the vegetables in the meat. I make a really nice meat stuffing for Thanksgiving. I make a lot of stuffings for Thanksgiving. There's so many different varieties, but the Italian way, we make a really nice meat stuffing. Okay. Take that a little bit. Okay, this is all we're going to do to a brown. Then I will deglaze the uh, pan with the wine and then add a cup of beef, beef broth. Can I tell you truly, I promise you, this smells amazing. And now I'm not going to over mix this. I hate when this gets pebbly. And I think if I keep mixing it, it's going to get pebbly. And I'm not going to cook the meat to death. I'm not going to completely brown it because it's going to cook in the oven. And you know what? Dry it out. Mm. So you want this pretty much cooked, but there could be some pink in it, guys. You just don't want to kill it twice. Okay. To call it a day, I think this is as cooked as I want. You can still see I have big pieces. It's not heavily. I didn't stir it to death, even though I did stir it. Well, let me see if I can zoom in for you. Let me take it off the burner. Can you see? Some of it is still pink, like right here, that piece. Some of that in here. That's fine, guys. Um, that is fine. I'm starting the burner down. Because you're going to cook it, like I said, in the oven. And we don't want to cook it to death or kill it twice. Guys, when you have fresh thyme like this, see these leaves right here? You pull them down that way. You hold it at the top, grab it, and just pull like that. Oh, hold on. Like that. And they come off just like that. You gotta cut them. Let's say, that's how you clean it off. Nice. Speaking of the thyme, you know what's delicious? Fresh thyme and mashed potatoes. That is yummy. I'm going to take two tablespoons of the tomato paste. Okay. One, two. Now, you don't have to take the chopped meat mixture out of the frying pan, but I am. Why? Because just I'm anal like that. When I make homemade tomato sauce, tomato gravy, I always um, cook my tomato paste first. It takes, I think, some of the bitterness away. The can it just... Um, Gives it a, a nicer flavor, okay, and a deeper flavor too. So that's what I'm going to do. And again, if you don't have it, that's fine. Use ketchup. So I'm just gonna uh, over medium, medium to high heat, just for a couple of minutes, maybe two, three minutes. I'm just gonna um, move it around. Then I'm gonna add my broth. The, you know, not, excuse me, not the broth. I'm going to add the one-third cup of red wine. Then I'm going to add the flour, then the broth, and all the seasonings. Okay, so let me work on this. I'm going to higher the heat a little bit. Okay, guys, now we're going to add um, the flour right to this. This is two tablespoons of flour. Two tablespoons of flour. We're going to add... The seasonings. I know I said a tablespoon of um, parsley. It's about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of parsley. Okay. We're going to add, and remember, rosemary and rosemary is very strong, and so is sage. And I know I didn't mention sage before, just because I feel like putting sage in. It's fall. reminds me of Thanksgiving. And you can taste a little bit of the thyme in here. So I thought, you know what? Let me add it. So here is our sage right here that goes in. Here is our cut up rosemary. You could use a knife or you can use, if you have one of those um, ones for spices, like at home, that little mill, you could use that. Or you can use even scissors. Okay, so let me just throw this. Get this going. Let me add a little bit of sage not much so this stuff is strong and this is leaves i have ground but i feel like using the leaves tonight just a little bit because this is, oh no 
guys, when, um, let me see if I, could, I can't put my light on because my battery is too low. I apologize. When my battery died, I hit this with a little bit of the, um, the fat, the grease, a little bit of the fat that I cooked the chopped meat in. Okay, you could drain it all out, but I'm telling you, if you were smart, you would keep a little bit in there. That is flavor. But I just added a little bit of that to this. Okay. Because don't forget, this, the chopped meat mixture is supposed to be in here. And I took it out. And I'm going to add the wine. Just for a minute, I'm going to let that up. And then I'm going to add one cup of the, um, uh, Then I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to this. Okay, I'm going to do this off camera so I'm not in your ears. Guys, here's the one cup of beef stock. Is this low sodium? No, it didn't have any low sodium. Um, no brand. Hold on, guys. It's my fault, I guess, for not looking at the can, but I was looking for only low sodium. Um, so I can control the salt. If I knew this was not low sodium, I would have cut back a little bit on the salt. So, you know when I said I was going to salt and pepper this layer? I will not. Uh, because this is a regular, um, th th this, this to me personally, when you buy chicken stock or beef stock that's not low sodium, it's salty, it's salty as heck. So I only buy low sodium so I can control the salt. Um, so I'm glad I only used a half a teaspoon of salt in that pound of chopped meat because you know what the rule of thumb is. Um, and I'm glad I noticed just now it's not low sodium. So I will not use salt in this layer. So we should be fine, but I will be honest with you. I will taste it. If it's a little salty, I will let you guys know for sure. Okay. I'm going to just do this for like another 60 seconds and then I'm going to get my meat. Okay, now we're going to add back all that meat, just like that, and that oil, some of that oil I'm going to add in there and leave some in the pan, so that's flavor. Now I'm just going to simmer this until thick, and you can see this gravy, this sauce is already pretty much thickened. It's kind of like when you guys make homemade manwich or sloppy, uh, sloppy joes, which is your manwich. Um, it's kind of the same thing, but when you do that, you use a lot of brown sugar in there. Okay. Okay, guys, you can see how this is going to get nice and tight. Now, what I'm going to do is continue cooking this for about another minute to two minutes, maybe a minute and a half, and then I'm going to put it in its um, 9 by 11 pan and let it completely cool. It could take 20 minutes to 40 minutes, maybe even 45, depends, maybe a half hour, and then I'm going to put the mashed potatoes on it. I will not do it when it's hot because it becomes like, it melts into the color. Smelling amazing. I wish I could put my light on. Oh, there we go. Woohoo. Kind of steamy. Let me see. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Guys, um, I did not add my peas, so let's do that. Now, I did not add paprika. Paprika is just really for color. You know it has no flavor. Um, and I personally don't think even the heavily smoked paprika has much flavor, but we're just going to add a little bit to say I did, right? Just a sprinkling. Okay. Now let's add our peas. There's a cup of peas. We're just going to eyeball it, guys. And again, if you don't like peas, 
please use green beans or whatever vegetable you like. You could put corn in here. You could put a mix of vegetables. Okay. And just stir it around. You know what I was saying to Ken? I could take this right now. You know like a meatloaf pan, those rectangular pans, you know, the long ones? I could shove this in there and put the potatoes on top of that too. But to make it more thick. Because this is, you know, going to be flatter because this is a bigger pan. If I used a smaller pan, it would be thicker. Okay, so I'm, so I'm just going to stir this and then I'll be back when this cools. Guys, just so you know what, you know what I did? I put that, this in a smaller pan. I put this in like um, a 10 by eight. You know when I wanted a seven by 11? This is a 10 by eight. So it's basically the same size. Um, and this is perfect. So I want it to be thicker than I do spread out to be thinner. And then I'm gonna put all the nice, and you're gonna have a really nice, super thick layer of mashed potatoes. Yummy. I do something similar with pizza dough when I make a cheeseburger one in french fries, the kids used to love it. But all right, I'll show you. This is almost done cooling. Guys, now we're gonna do the mashed potatoes. I can't wait. We're just gonna put them on in little mounds. They've been sitting in my air conditioner room. Okay, just like this. And we're gonna carefully smush it around. So I don't want to press too hard and we're mix it in to the bottom. Okay. So I'm just going to keep doing this and then we're going to play with it. So let me just get all the potatoes out. Isn't this, can I just show you something real quick? Isn't this a cute bowl too? Wait. Isn't that cute? Again, I said I love squirrels, but how cute. Christmas tree shop if anyone's wondering and if you're out of the states it's just like a little novelty store they have um a little bit of grocery a little bit of seasonal stuff you know guys I'm just making a little bit of a design in the potatoes so I'll catch some heat get a little crispy you don't have to Okay, I'm just trying to, I don't want them all flat, even though they can still get crispy when they're flat, guys. You can still get flip, uh, crispy potatoes. Okay, now I'm going to put on some cheese. I'm going to do no more than a half a cup. I believe I told you that a half a cup or third cup. I mean, that little bit is not going to make a difference. Actually, this is where you could stop. And, well, actually, let me put the cheese on. You could stop here where you could add your cheese. And this is what you do prior to, um, like, if you want to freeze it or keep it in your refrigerator for a couple of days, this is what you do. And you stop right here. You wrap it up really good in a couple layers of foil and either stick it in your freezer or you stick it in your refrigerator. And that's what I'm going to do tonight. This is good. I'm going to cook it off tomorrow. Everything is done but cooking it. Okay. A little bit more. Yum. Okay. I think that's about it, guys. I'm going to clean up my edges, wrap it up in foil, stick it in the refrigerator until tomorrow. And then tomorrow I will cook it off 400 degrees, about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Doesn't it look delicious? Trust me, it is it's delicious. Easy, easy peasy. And so, so yummy. It's delicious. And it's great for fall. I just love a cozy fall night in a warm, toasty meal. And actually, I prefer cooking in my oven than I do even in a pressure cooker. Slow cooker is not bad, but I just love how an oven warms up the house. It's chilly, 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 cold outside, and you have your cozy lights on the inside. Whether you have a fireplace or not, it's not needed, but it's just a nice, cozy, warm meal like this. Awesome.
days. Today's the next day. I took it out of the refrigerator. Um, I took it about a half hour ago, 40 minutes ago. Got it to room temperature. I'm going to stick it in the oven. And if you really wanted to, you could let this sit um, five to ten minutes to settle. You know, when you make lasagna, you got to let it sit for sure. You got to let it settle. Um, if you let this settle, it won't run on the bottom. So we're just going to do it. You could use a spatula for this too, but let's do it. See, look at that. That's what happens, guys. Yum, look at that. Hang on, I'll take a photo. Sorry, guys. Hey, everyone. Ken here again. I am getting ready to taste Lisa's Shepherd's Pie. Here it is. And uh, I just want to tell you before I taste it, I like dishes like this casseroles i like it's like the um the uh chicken pot pie, chicken pot pie i just i tasted um you think anybody cares? that one had biscuits on top this one has mashed potatoes which i also like it smells so good it mm. does it smells great can't wait so i'm gonna get a bite of everything on my spoon mm. 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 it's good <laughs> I know. <laughs> you guys know why I look the way I do. <laughs> My wife cooks so well. So good. Um, so again, this is another winner, another keeper. Make sure you guys make this. Try it. Let your family I think kids it. would like, like this, it. too, for sure. It's definitely yeah. kid-friendly, guys. Mm. Definitely kid-friendly. Not spicy. I don't make mm. things that's not kid-friendly. I raise Very three tasty. kids. Yeah, they like I do my two grandkids, like and I'll tell you what. I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We talk at the same time. I'm I'll shut up. I'm being filmed, and she's... Okay. I should be standing there. She should be here. But anyways, delicious. Yes, definitely. Your your kids will love it. You'll love it. Please try it. Thank you.